Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We got another episode for you. It's troubleshooting your gas metal arc welding process. Now, GMAW makes a wide range and variety of sounds. Now, these sounds can range from all, depending on the different types of transfer that you're using, wire sizes, and tons of other variables. Now, this sound right here, you do not want to be hearing. That's spittering, sputtering, popping, and there's a thousand different reasons why this could be happening. So I'm going to help you troubleshoot why your MIG machine is popping off on you. We all know with a constant voltage process, we've got to set our voltage. So for MIG, our GMAW, we want to set that voltage range. Now this range is going to vary depending on the wire size and material thickness you're running. But this little knob here controls the amount of wire that comes out of that gun. Now this and this need to be married together so that it properly functions. Depending on, again, your voltage is where you're going to have this. If you have too much wire feed speed and not enough voltage, you're going to have a really hard, aggressive wire trying to punch into your puddle, but not enough voltage to melt it. So you're going to have a really fast, hard popping sound. Whereas if we have not enough wire feed speed and too much voltage, you're going to see that as a real slow, soft pop dropping these bombs. You might melt the contact tip in the process. So they're two different types of pops, but all comes down to you not adjusting these properly. And because you're trash at, you know, setting your settings, you've probably messed up a contact tip or two. So you want to make sure that one, you have the right size contact tip. If you're running 035 size wire, you're going to want to run it in 035 size tip. If you use something smaller, obviously the wire is not going to go through, but you can get away with running a bigger one and it might weld okay, but it's going to be running around and wallowing out the sides, not getting a good contact on the contact tip. So now you're just got a weird sputter and spickering and spattering sounds and you're trying to figure out why. Well, check that tip, make sure you got the right size, or maybe it's been used so much. It's burnt up, has gunk on it or it's just the wire has just wore it out. That's what happens when you uh, play dumb games and get stupid rewards. And you just need a new tip. And it's welding, but it's just kind of welding, kind of rough. And you're gonna have that with these types of setups here. We've got a ground that's grounded to just a little bit of steel, not a good solid connection with the paint that's on that. So we wanna ground either directly to our table here, or we can ground directly to our part, which is gonna be the best ground that you could possibly get. Now, just having good clean connection on this end, we gotta have good clean connection on this end. So wherever the ground is, if there's any rust in between those two points, you're gonna have a spittery, sputtery well. You can still get by, but it just makes for some bad craftsmanship. Make sure you have good clean connection. Now, while you're in this wire feeder and you're still having some problems, you've got your grounded, you've got clean metal, well, you can still have some dirty wire. Maybe this sucker's been sitting in here for a while, it's gathered some dust, some rust. Well, I can see that this is some nasty wire, so we're gonna go ahead and take it off. What a waste. But if you know quality, you gotta have clean wire. This is your wire cleaner. It's really simple to use. You just pop off the cover, slide it over top of your wire, put your little metal clamp back on, and as that wire feeds, that'll get pushed to the front of the unit, and that wire will slow every, every time it gets pushed through, it gets wiped off. Now you're like, well, I don't know where to get one of these fancy wire cleaners you're talking about, Austin. That's uh, no big deal. Grab yourself a set of earplugs that every shop has. Back that wire out. Go ahead and pierce that wire through your earplug. Out the other end. And now you've got your welder wire cleaner without all the drama. Keep your wire clean, your metal clean, good ground. And if you've got a good connection, you should have a good weld. I got the wire feeder open. You might as well set the tension. Make sure we have the right tension. We got two places for tension. We've got it on the spool here. Having this old dog too loose, too far to the left, as soon as you stop that gun, you'll see this thing actually start to bird nest. While this isn't a big problem with popping, it's gonna cause a lot of internal problems. So you wanna make sure that that tensioner is as tight as it can be. If it's too tight, this thing won't roll and you'll know <laughs> it's too tight. As far as this one here, Every machine will give you a guide about where it needs to set as far as too tight or too loose. If you have it too loose, you're gonna see that this wire isn't gonna to wanna to run. It's not gonna pull if you put any type of restriction against that spool. If it's too loose and you put any type of restriction against that spool, you can see that it wants to slip. So we want it tight. We want it tight enough. And a good way you can see if you have the right kind of push behind it is take your glove, make sure you don't have a pointy piece of wire 
and put it in your glove. You want that wire to ball up. You want that roller to keep pushing and push into your glove. Now, if you have this too tight, it's gonna end up snapping your wire and you got a whole nother set of problems. But make sure you have the right tension so you won't pop too much. Man, and even still, it started to be like a little bit bumpy. So why is it still bumpy? I've checked everything. Well, it could be your liner. You've got this liner that runs on the inside of this MIG gun all the way back. And if it catches a kink or a loop in the line, it could cause some wire restriction. Just enough to make you mad. So check your liner, pull it out, make sure there's no kinks, replace it. It might be dirty, full of crud. The liner could give you some wire issues too. Having all those variables messed up is going to leave for a really undesirable weld. We got that thing knocked out. We took a grinder to it, ground all that out because we're going to walk over this machine. Luckily, it takes a lot of the guesswork out for you. This Power MIG 260 from Lincoln's real nice. We can hit that MIG setting and go through steel. We're going to run 035 wire. We set everything up that we're using on this 3 8 plate, and it's going to give us our parameters at 23 volts and 500 inches per minute. It takes a lot of the guesswork out for us. As long as we have everything else nice and spick and span and clean and ready to roll with the right tensions, we shouldn't have any wire restrictions or any popping. Well guys, I hope that helped answer a lot of your questions on why my MIG weld is popping. It's going crazy. We got that under control. We've got some nice, solid, clean welds on this piece of material, so we know this baby's purring. If you have any questions at all, go to that weld app, guys. Ask us directly. My name, Austin Hargett. Inside that app, look me up. You can ask questions in the main feed, and if I don't answer them here on the YouTube channel, someone else will. Go check us out, guys. See you on the next one.